2023 was filled with some of the best games of recent memory, but was also filled with a few letdowns. So in this video, I want to share the five JRPGs that disappointed me the most. Now, let me make something crystal clear, so listen up. I don't necessarily think these games are bad. However, I do feel like they let me down in some way, some more than others, hence why they're higher on the list. Now, let's kick this off with Trinity Trigger. Trinity Trigger was very obviously inspired by and for fans of Secret of Mana, an all-time classic Super Nintendo RPG that I've heard nothing but praise for ever since I first heard about the game. And based on the trailers for Trinity Trigger, the game looked pretty cool. I loved its more low-polygon look with cool character portraits and fun-looking action combat. However, I had never played the original Secret of Mana, and let's just say that Trinity Trigger may have been a little too faithful to that game. The thing that easily left me the most disappointed was the combat. While I can appreciate games wanting to stay faithful to old classics, games have come a long way since 1993 and in most ways for the better. I could not stand Trinity Trigger's stamina system, it just feels at odds with itself. The game feels like it wants to play like a hack and slash action game with how many enemies you encounter and how easy they go down. However, I felt like I was just constantly waiting for my stamina bar to refill. It was just so boring and annoying. Now I look at something like the Trials of Mana remake, that's how you design a game like this. The combat there just felt so much better. And then you have one of the worst implementations of an item wheel I've ever seen. It's so incredibly clunky and you have to go like three layers deep just to find the items you want to use. Again, it felt like the development team was trying to stay faithful to Secret of Mana at the expense of making the game fun. And also the bosses are just boring attack sponges that were never fun. And that's how I had sum up my time with Trinity Trigger. Not fun. It was one of the most aggravating games I've played in a long time and definitely left me disappointed. Matto Anomalies had all the potential in the world to be something cool and unique. It's essentially a detective noir JRPG where half your time is spent solving mysteries in this cyberpunk city, with the other half being made up of dungeon crawling in a parallel universe. Wrap it all up in a unique art style, and this is a surefire hit, right? And not so much. The best part is easily the story. A lot of the detective moments are pretty interesting, and you'll be invested in each one. There's even some pretty solid voice acting. However, that's kind of where the game stops being entertaining. The actual detective work is just running around talking to people, not really putting together clues like a detective would in something like, say, L.A. Noir. As far as the dungeon crawling goes, it's about as bare bones as it gets. You'll dive in and you have some puzzles to solve, some easier than others, but mostly boring, and then you fight enemies when you run into them. And again, the combat is turn-based, but there's nothing special to it. You just take turns, swapping attacks, there's no weakness system, cool abilities to mix things up, nothing like that. There are genuinely better turn-based combat systems on the Super Nintendo, something that Chrono Trigger absolutely puts Mato Anomalies to shame. And maybe the worst part of the gameplay are these mine hack card games. I think on paper what it's supposed to be is simulating the idea of like an interrogation, but the way you actually play it doesn't make any sense. You're using different cards to kind of like attack their will and break it and get them to admit guilt or give up a clue. But by the end, I ended up just picking random cards until I actually finished it because it was so infuriating, I just never knew what I was doing. Mato Anomalies is the poster child for a cool idea executed poorly. Better luck next time time, guys. Infinity Strash Dragon Quest The Adventures of Die has to be one of the saddest video game cash grabs I've seen in a long time. On the surface, it looks like a quality game with some appealing visuals and fun action combat, but then you actually start playing the game, and I use that word about as loosely as possible. Now, the game is based on the 2020 anime, which is based on the best-selling 90s manga, and honestly, you're better off just watching the anime because you'll be looking at it for most of the game anyways. But what's worse is it's not even clips from the show. The game borders on being a slideshow as most of the story cutscenes are still frames from the anime with voice dialogue. It's absolutely ridiculous. Now, to be fair, there are fully animated cutscenes using the in-game visuals, but those are very rare. It was either a very conscious decision to do this to keep the budget down, or they ran out of time and had to make some choices. Either way, it's a giant bummer. Now, in the scam bits of gameplay where you actually get to play it, it's just repetitive as all hell. You walk through linear hallways, fight an arena full of enemies, and move on. The combat doesn't feel great either, despite how it might look. You have to be very very intentional with your attacks as it feels like there's an ever so slight delay to everything you do. You'll also get repeated bosses several times throughout the game which just feels ridiculous. Now the one area that houses a bit of fun is the Temple of Recollection. It's this sort of semi-roguelike mode where you'll explore the temple and gain buffs every so often, and by the end you'll get rewards that you can put on your character to make them stronger. Now some games can hide their budgetary restraints well, but with Infinity Strash there's no hiding them. This game should have been excellent to honor the prolific anime and manga series, but it just feels like like a sad cash grab. 
Now, if you watch a lot of my videos or other JRPG content creators, you're probably sick of all of us talking about how bad Loop 8 Summer of Gods is. But to truly understand why it's so disappointing and why it's on so many people's worst JRPGs of the year list, we have to go back to the pre-release marketing cycle. Now, in the trailers, it showcased a beautiful seaside town with some cool characters, turn-based combat, and dating sim elements. And based on the trailers, it would be fair to assume that it was a life sim with some kind of turn-based combat system mix in. Think something like Persona or maybe even Rune Factory. But let me tell tell you that is not what Loop 8 is at all, and honestly we all probably should have looked at the name of the game a little bit closer. What Loop 8 actually is, is a roguelike dating sim. Let me repeat that, a roguelike dating sim. So what happens is the game showcases some kind of ominous scene and a countdown timer starts. Essentially, someone in town is about to be corrupted by a dark force and you only have so many days to find and save the person before the time runs out. Now, how exactly do you do that? I don't know. The big problem is the game doesn't tell you which character and the clues are so vague that you basically have to get lucky to figure out who the person is. Now, for the most part, these ominous scenes usually show a specific area of town. I usually spent my time exploring those areas and improving my relationships with every character that went there, but that didn't always work. Now, what happens if you don't find and save the person before the time runs out? Well, you have to start from the beginning of the game and all your relationships start from zero. And what this means is reading all the dialogue you've already read and leveling up all your relationships with all the characters again. And you'll inevitably start this loop several times and it just gets so tedious and boring. In other roguelikes, it's fun because the actual core gameplay is good. But when the gameplay is literally just clicking through dialogue you've read a million times, already, you just feel like an idiot. You're saying to yourself, why am I still playing this game? It becomes so infuriating because if the game didn't have that looping element, it would have been amazing. The town is gorgeous, the characters are super interesting, and the overall premise is honestly pretty wild. Instead, we're left with a game we'll all look back on in a few years and say to ourselves, man, what could have been? And finally, we come to my most disappointing JRPG of 2023, Final Fantasy 16. Now, before I really get into why this game left me so disappointed, I do want to say that I think the game is very well made. It has super high production values, incredible combat, great music, and overall, it just looks like the most expensive game I've ever played. For me, I just didn't like the rest of the game that was designed around these aspects. My first gripe is with the story. Now, I will say it's very well told, well performed, and well presented. However, it gets really overindulgent at times. Now, if you've played the game, you know there's super long cutscenes with relatively little gameplay. And I really believe if you timed it out, there would be more cutscenes and dialogue than there are actual gameplay sequences, which is kind of crazy. What's sad is that the game has a really strong opening. It's basically the whole demo. It's like really well paced, good mix of cutscene, story, and gameplay. But then the middle of the game just feels like it drags. I feel like most story missions in the middle of the game felt something like this. You go to this new area and you need to find someone. But then you come across a guy that says, hey, I know where you can find this guy, but you have to do a favor for me first. And then while you're doing that favor, you need to do a favor for somebody else. And at that point, you're like three favors deep. And by the time you come back to the original objective, it's like, wait, what was I doing? Now let's talk about the gameplay. And while the combat is truly excellent, it's really, really fun. The rest of the game designed around it is so disappointing. Most side quests are the most basic fetch quests or talk to this guy quests you can imagine. Now I will say that the hunt board was fun, but ultimately it did grow stale by the end because the rewards just weren't worth it. And I feel like one of the keys to any good RPG is exploration and discovery, finding secrets like loot. And the loot in this game is just so lame, it's basically non-existent. The only difference between one item and another is some higher stat, like for example swords, the only difference is one sword does more damage, that's it. There's no unique elemental properties, critical strike chance, or unique attack tied to that weapon. Nothing. The gear felt so pointless that they basically shouldn't have bothered, like seriously, it's the most vague illusion of progression I've ever seen. And even if you do decide to go exploring, there's never anything interesting to find like, oh, two gill, thanks, or some parts for crafting. I only have 10,000 of those. And because of this, it basically makes exploration pointless. Now you do level up and you can customize your attack loadout, but in the end, Final Fantasy 16 borders on not really being an RPG at all. And also, can I just say that the hub areas were some of the worst designed hub areas I've ever played? It feels like they put the quests and item vendors as far away as possible and made doing anything there just feel incredibly annoying. And it doesn't help that you can't even 
even run at full speed. So you're just running super slow. And it's like, oh my gosh, can we just get there? I could go on and on, but honestly, I feel like I'm just ranting at this point. I think why my disappointment for this game is so great because going in, the hype was so high because it's like, yeah, it's Yoshi P and the Final Fantasy 14 team. These guys are great. What could go wrong? I guess I just feel like what they wanted to make and what I expected out of a Final Fantasy game in 2023 were just not the same thing. What they're doing with Final Fantasy 7 Remake Trilogy is exactly what I want out of Final Fantasy. It's doing a lot of the things that 16 did well, like high production values and fun combat. However, it also has rewarding exploration, RPG elements that actually matter, cutscenes that are compelling but don't overstay their welcome, moments of levity and fun, remember those in Final Fantasy, and just a certain indescribable charm that Final Fantasy 16 is just completely devoid of. It really does bring me no pleasure to talk poorly about the latest entry in one of my favorite gaming franchises of all time, but I always like to keep it honest with you guys, and I just couldn't keep it held down any longer. Now, these were all games from 2023, but we have all kinds of cool looking JRPGs coming in 2024. And to see all the JRPGs big and small set to release in 2024, check out this video right here. And special thanks to Reset Switch, Tyler Kuzava, and the Miyazaki Man for supporting me over on Patreon. To get exclusive videos and other cool perks, consider supporting me over on patreon.com slash thegamingshelf. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.